Good evening and welcome to London Paddington. This evening our journey started with us just getting our local train from South London up into Central London and we hopped off at Farringdon and from there we've been able to very excitingly get onto the Elizabeth Line. That line actually only opened up a couple of days ago and it's already proved to be such a game changer for us. We've always found getting out to places like Paddington where we are at the moment and also Heathrow Airport just to be a little bit of a pain, having to change several times on the tube. And it was amazing we just got out here so quickly. We have boarded onto what's known as the Night Riviera train. And it's an overnight sleeper train that operates here in England. And it runs from London all the way down through to Cornwall. We're gonna be going all the way to the end of the line to Penzance. What's really nice is that we've been able to get our own little cabin and it's already been set up with beds. So we've got these gorgeous duvets, which are super clean. They smell super fresh. They're nice and feathery and cozy. We've got pillows, not one, but two pillows and they are like feather down ones as well so really good high quality and we've not had to make the beds either we had just rocked up and they were already made up like this for us the one thing that probably is worth noting though because we're going away for an entire week we've got quite a lot of luggage with us and it has just been a little bit i suppose like having to squeeze it underneath the bed just because of how tight and close quarters i think everything pretty much is on this train from this particular cabin to even just the corridors of trying to walk down with our luggage it's, it's been incredibly tight it's not our first time doing an overnight sleeper train the first one that we took was back in 2011 when we took the train from turkey's capital of ankara to istanbul it's quite a basic train in comparison to this one we did have an attendant who came around and made up our beds for us and then a little bit more recently, I think in 2017, we took an overnight sleeper train from Bangkok up to the border with Laos. And again, it was quite a basic seeming train, which again, an attendant came around and made up the bedding for us. But this just, I don't know, like it just, it feels almost like a sort of hotel standard of things. And some of the really cool things that this cabin has got to offer just sort of elevates it to a standard that our other two experiences didn't have and I'd really like to be able to show you around this cabin and just show off some of the really cool things that it has to offer us as passengers. On the back of the door into the cabin we've got not one but two coat hooks. At the top bunk what we've got here is a button that if you press it calls for the train attendant and pretty much the whole time that we've been on this train for we've just got this like high-pitched beeping going on and the train attendant she explained that it's very commonplace that people get on the train and they think that this is a light switch so they end up calling for the attendant so we know better than to ring that we've also got some light switches here which okay that one didn't appear to do anything oh there's a light over there it's like one it's not doing much what about this one Ooh. <laughs> and then this one which i think is like yeah sort of a reading light for in bed and then we've got a plug socket and then we've also got a couple of usb ports as well which is great for charging things like phones and the camera and then what's really nice is even though we're up on the top bunk and the floor's quite a way away they very thoughtfully put up a shelf here so it just means that we can easily put things up here to be able to charge a bottle of water for example as you're falling asleep and quite nicely they have given us a hand towel as well and just underneath here we've got a dial which we can turn up if we want to have the heating on and we can turn down for air conditioning because we've got a top bunk sometimes it's a case that you have to sort of struggle and clamber on up there but what i think is really cool about this train is that you've got a button here it's a little bit on the stiff side but you can just pull out some ladders very very space saving and it just allows you to very easily go up onto the bed like so they've also provided us with a wardrobe which is amusing because when i first came in i was saying oh my goodness it's so tiny what are we going to do with our bags and andy said you could probably put them in the wardrobe but when we opened up the wardrobe, it's one of those ones that's incredibly shallow. So I guess, 
free go. You've got some areas to be able to hang up coats, but I think it's a little bit of wasted space given that you've got those clothes pegs on the back of the door. But the other thing that our attendant did explain is because you can't drink the tap water on these trains. Inside of here, they've got a bottle of water for each of us, which is a nice touch. Oh, and a couple of plastic cups that the bottles are sat inside of as well. Moving on to the bottom bunk now, you've got really similar setup to what we had on the top bunk in that we have got a button here which can call the attendant, we've got three light switches, the main difference is, is that we just have a sort of slightly different reading lamp, one that's bendable to be able to read a book, uh, and then again lights to be able to turn off the main lights in the cabin. We've also got another plug socket which is great because it just means that if there are two of you travelling you're not having to fight over who gets to charge their stuff, and a couple of USBs just above that too. We've then, next to this, got what we thought initially was a table, but it turns out to actually be a sink, and again this is something that our attendant explained to us. I've sat here for a while, like pushing on it, being like, how do you open it up? Thinking that it was a little bit like the wardrobe, but it turns out that you just push it up like so. And then in here, you've got some running water of both hot and cold. I don't think we've had a sink in our private cabins before when we've used trains. And I've always found it a bit odd to have to go to that like public toilet on the train to be able to brush your teeth. So actually the idea of being able to brush our teeth in this cabin tonight is actually really rather luxurious. This one you can probably see from the shot that we're doing and how we're sort of having to squeeze myself in here. It is an incredibly low down space. And we've also got, I don't know, I'm not, I think it's like the back of a sofa maybe. And it's on quite an angle protruding into the bed. So it feels incredibly narrow as well as very low down in here. It's cozy, I will give it that. But maybe if you're very, very claustrophobic, you could potentially tr struggle in this space. We have a single window on the train too, and it seems to come with what I'm guessing is probably a blackout blind, which is nice in comparison to curtains that would obviously like sway with the movement of the train. I think the only problem is, is that it's saying to pull here. So I think I push it down and then pull it out. Oh, okay, I really struggled. It's a bit loud. But then, as I say, we've not left the train station yet, so that's just the Paddington's first class lounge out there. The other really cool thing that I've picked up on is the fact that this seems to be some kind of interconnecting door that goes through to the cabin next door. So if you're travelling with friends or family and want a way to be able to go between the two without needing to go out into the public corridor, these interconnecting rooms seem to be a really nice touch. I think we've really lucked out because next door in that direction, the door on it really clearly says staff only, so I think they're going to be quite quiet. And then I did notice when I went for a little bit of a wander and an explore that the top bunk in that side hasn't been pulled down, so I think our next door neighbour there is on their own, so touch wood, hopefully we're going to have quite a quiet journey this evening, but we'll go and have a look at a few other things that are now on this train. A quick toilet tour. The bedrooms on this train don't come with en suites, so it looks like at the front end of each of the carriages there's two toilets and they look pretty standard for UK toilets on trains. We do have toilets that are fully flushable, sinks with running water but the running water is not drinkable, very standard. Got things like hand dryer, mirror, you've got shavers, sockets and because I've come in here right at the start of the journey, we've not even left the train station yet, it smells actually pretty good and it's very clean and tidy but I think I'm the first person to use it because it looked like most people went and used the toilets in the first class lounge before they got onto the train so it'll be interesting to see what it looks like and how it smells come tomorrow morning. About 6 30 in the morning I think I woke up about maybe 45 minutes ago and wasn't able to get back to sleep and I think we were around about Plymouth at that point I have to confess, I did not sleep particularly well last night, but I think it's my own fault. I made a very, very grave error when we were in the first class lounge waiting to be able to board this train. They had complimentary teas and coffees and things. I wasn't quite stupid enough to go with a proper coffee, but I did go for a decaf. And I think just throughout the night, I just kept on waking up because of the swaying of the train. 
but then because I was needing to go to the toilet, it just meant that I couldn't fall back asleep unless I got up and I felt really bad because the lights out in the corridor was so bright. Every time I went out, I was waking up Andy. So I think today might be a bit of a slog. The good news is though, is that our train attendant is going to be bringing us breakfast. there I was trying to be super quiet this morning a little bit aware of our neighbor on that side because shortly after we turned out our lights she coughed and it sounded like she was pretty much in this room but then when they've come around to deliver us for breakfast we had our door open just a little bit of the cooler air in because it's very very warm and they could not wake her up next door so no problem so I'll share what we've got for breakfast so our option last night was oatmeal a bacon roll or a pan of chocolate and I did ask about the oatmeal and I said, does it come with any kind of flavoring? And she didn't seem to think it did. So I thought, go on the safe side and just go with bacon butty. If you walked into a cafe and you saw that, you wouldn't be thinking, oh, I must buy it. But at the same time, it's included in the price. And they've brought along a cup of coffee for us. There's in a cup, a couple of milk sachets, a packet of biscuits, which I definitely wasn't expecting. And then I suppose I hadn't really thought it through, but they've also brought things like ketchup and brown sauce too. And of course, if you're having a bacon butty, that's gonna make it taste really good. <laughs> not exactly the best breakfast in the world, but you know, room service to your door, you're not having to pay any extra for it and caffeine first thing in the morning, I'm not gonna turn up my nose at that. And, really gorgeous rolling green countryside views out the window as well it's 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 a nice way to start the day and trying to get out of this cabin and off of the train i think it's going to be just about as interesting as what it was getting on everything is tiny and my luggage is anything but tiny Once we disembarked from the train, I was a little bit curious as to what the bar carriage was like. Our train attendant last night had said it was filling up really fast and if we were interested in going down, we needed to be quite quick. But I was just so sleepy. I really wasn't in the mood for going down and, and having a drink last night, but it looked quite cool, really quite spacious. If you're wanting to stretch your legs a little bit and get out of those really cramped cabins, it will be a really nice space to go and sit in. I also was able to have a quick peek into the seated area. And I suppose I've likened it to the fact that for me on my budget I was able to upgrade to the overnight sleeper train cabin but usually when I fly particularly long haul and if I'm flying overnight my budget I can't justify upgrading to say lie down flat seats in business class and so I would just sit in a seat and fall asleep in that and I suppose it's not too dissimilar to that. I did notice that there was an accessible cabin which was obviously much bigger for people who are wheelchair users and just the way in which it was sort of situated at the end of the carriage it also allowed for a wheelchair to be able to fit down the hallway to get to the door to that cabin even though the rest of the hallways were very narrow our cabin tickets also gave us access into the first class lounge at the Penzance end too so we went in for some much needed coffee. They also had showers there too where they provided things like shower gel and you could ask the person on the front desk for some towels so that you could just freshen up after the train ride because you might have noticed that there were no showers on board the train. I think at this point I'm just going to finish up this video as we've arrived now in Penzance and hopefully I will see you guys next Sunday when the adventure continues as we take a small light craft airplane from the mainland of Cornwall out to the Isles of Scilly.